It was May 2018, at the end of a conference of Jews and Arabs, we were about to take communion. And this is when I saw that picture. I saw the Jordan Valley as a wound, bleeding wound all the way from north to south. And what amazed me is that it was in God's heart, that big wound. I also saw all of us, Jews and Arabs, and worldwide Christians, standing on one bank or another. And we were trying this whole conference to get close to one another, to get to know each other better. And as we were doing that, we were even scratching deeper into the wound, opening the scars. This wound symbolizes all the gaps and problems between the Jews and the Arabs, whether it's geopolitical or cultural. We hurt each other throughout history. I also saw how tears coming up from the north would sow into the water. It would start with salt, but somehow it will turn it into sweet and it will sweet source of water and it will somehow flow all the way to the Dead Sea and breathe life into it back again. At that point, we were already planning our journey to Jordan. So I knew what was coming a few days later. And there, uniting or putting together my ability to identify with my nation as they make their way back from exile into our Bethlehem, the house of bread. I also had no idea that I'm going to leave a part of my heart in Jordan and that this journey and its fruit is going to become my passion, a part of my routine and change my life in many ways. But I was ready to cross over. Priscilla, what does uh, Jordan need to hear from me to be comforted? From me as a mama, from Naomi, not me, Orna. If I were to answer that question, it would be from my perspective through the giftings that he's put in me. And it would say that mm. a mother from here, Mama Naomi, mm. coming into Jordan into any Arab nation and bringing the words of the Lord of God through his scriptures, the purposes of God for the nations, you coming and opening up your heart and your, your mouth to the children of a nation, being in the place of being vulnerable and truthful. Does that make sense? I remember a couple of verses that describe God's heart towards Moab and then Ammon. He says, my, in Hebrew it says, my intestines cry to Moab like, like a violin. Oh like a violin, I'm, I'm, I'm yearning, I'm wailing to Moab and Ammon. Yeah. What deep healing could take place in that? That they have a place mm -hmm. in Him. Yeah. Because we're sitting in a very symbolic place mm -hmm. along the rift. Mm -hmm. Uh, that carries so much of the history of these two nations and a lot of many things that symbolize what we have been carrying throughout our journey. Mm -hmm. It was established as a, uh, an electric power station before Israel became a state. But we know that it served as a place of uh, cooperation and fellowship between both mm -hmm. nations. Do you, wanna, do you want to give us a couple of examples? Are you remembering what they told us when we came yes, here last Stanley. time? The soldier was talking to us and he said, the future prime minister of Israel, Golda Meir, and the king yes. of Jordan, King Abdullah, yeah. They always came here to have coffee with each other. So, we, 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 Let's read that conversation. Okay, so you be Golda Meir and I'll be oh, King well, Abdullah, okay? I let you be the king, yes, of course. <laughs> okay, wait, let's do this. So okay. this is this conversation takes place before, is, before Independence War in 1948. Why do you Israelis need to declare your independence now? What is the rush? You cannot call 2,000 years rush. <laughs> okay, we do not want the war. But we will have to fight. We will fight too. 
This is your duty. Right. In that case, we will meet here again after the war. For me as a watchman, when I read something like this, it is a clear picture that our perceptions cannot be based on what we're told in the news, but we have to come up from a third heaven perspective. Mm. However, I do want yes. to recall a story that was in the news, and I think it's very powerful. Extremely important to tell. A Jordanian uh, soldier that served here takes his weapon and he kills seven Jewish girls that were touring in the area. At that time, it was Abdallah's son Hussein. on the throne, King Hussein. He was abroad, so he comes back and goes to each house of these girls and he gets down on his knees and he asks the parents, the family, to forgive the Jordanian nation and he owns what happened and offers compensation. Of course, it hit the news, but what he did was so symbolic because he made it very clear, this is not a Jordanian idea. It was just one man who lost his sanity that did it, and Jordan still wants to pursue peace. He opened the door, I think, for the Arab nations, generally, for repentance. He humbled himself as low as he could. He did not have to come to Israel mm -hmm. to repent and apologize. He could have used other means. He chose the lowest one, mm -hmm. and that made the news. So this place, yeah, there was blood that was shed here, mm -hmm. but it carries also a way to cross mm -hmm. over. He crossed over. Mm -hmm. I think what is amazing about that story is that, and very painful, is that this place, when you and I came here and these gates were opened, it was the access point, it was the sharing point. This is where Remember how Jordan they would charge each other's battery when they ran low on their phones? Yeah, the Jordanian like, soldiers and the Israeli ones. The gates were open. Yes. They shared land together and yes. they were in such peace. The Israeli soldiers were so peaceful yeah. here. And you could look across and you could see the Jordanian soldiers. It was amazing. Yeah. When that soldier that they found out later was a madman, that mm. he had some real deep issues in his life, mm. he's the one who came here and he took the life he he removed the life of seven princesses of Israel. Mm. That was devastating to my heart, mm. to touch this land, to allow our feet mm. to walk here knowing that someone who was not representing the heart of Jordan came and did something that, that was totally opposite of the heart of the king. But when we were walking, there was such peace and healing. What we have here is a river flowing from Jordan, the Yarmouk. It meets the Jordan River coming from the Israeli side mm -hmm. and together they flow all the mm -hmm. way along the rift, the wounded rift, mm -hmm. to the Dead Sea. So what happened with that soldier added blood to the wound. What King Hussein did was an act of healing and what we want both our nations to see. Mm -hmm. And when that issue took place here, it brought such silence into my heart. I, there was no more words that could be spoken. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about King Hussein, what he did was he released the balm of Gilead, which, yes. is, which is located in Jordan. He released it yes. upon the Israeli families, that wound in the life of those mothers and fathers. We can't touch those. There's wounds on both sides of this Rift Valley. There's, we're here right in the middle. We can see Jordan on the other <laughs> side. I'm sitting here as a Jordanian looking at the closed gates and it's breaking my heart it's crazy. because we saw the unity between both sides of the family here and today there's iron gates up sealing it. I can't explain to you the crushed feeling I have in my heart today because of that. Mm. And you're right, that's why we can go back to the beginning of our conversation and say as mothers, Orna, yeah. as mothers, yeah. carrying the, the anointing from the Lord to nurture, asking the Holy Spirit to come with the balm of Gilead. Yeah. Into the wound. Into the wound. And this is not just about Jord the Jordanians, about the Arabs. Yeah. There's Arabs living here in this yeah. land yeah. who carry deep wounds, as do the, as do the Hebrew Israelis. Yeah. And you and I, when we come into this positioning as mothers, we don't take sides. And God said that to Joshua. You remember the story when when Joshua had to cross and Joshua got on his knees because all of a sudden he saw an angel of God there and he said, whose side are you on? And the angel said, I'm coming as a commander of the host of the armies of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He didn't, 
he didn't even he didn't say yes or no. He's like he wasn't taking sides. He was here to release the truth of heaven. This journey, if we're looking at it as mamas, we're not going to figure out who started first. I remember my mom doing it to me with my sisters. I hated it. <laughs> We wanted her yes. to hug both of us mm -hmm. and silence mm -hmm. us at her bosom. Come on. Come on. That's it.